Hey, welcome. It is the Redleaf Retrocast, anime edition. I'm your host, JD, joined with Tori and Hickey for another amazing episode. Some might say the best episode that we've ever done. The greatest episode of all time. All time. I'm glad you agree, Tori. I, I don't oh, know. No. There are some, there are some really good episodes we did and before. They will all pale in comparison to this. Absolutely. Anna Green Gables? Pfft. I spit on that mediocre trash. This is the one you should listen to. Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. We have sure, two sure. reviews. Well, I guess maybe technically four anime we're going to gonna review today. I was about to say there's three OVAs and then <laughs> yours. Yes, we're reviewing Vinland Saga before we get to our retro section where it's the OVA cast. What did we decide uh, we're going to call this sucker? Just uh, three OVAs? Or... I don't think we decided on anything. I don't think we decided on a name. <laughs> Trash Bucket Trash List. Trash Bucket List? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, this is amazing. Let's go with that. Except Papillon Rose, because that oh, thing God. is amazing. But <laughs> the other two greatest two, OVAs that Trash. you should watch. <laughs> they, should, they should be on everyone's sure. plan to watch list and bust them out in... Less than an hour and a half. It's a watch list. They should be on everyone's completed list. Well, at this time, absolutely, because they should watch those before they listen to this episode. Uh, I would make it a lot better, yes. Yes. This is the idea. This is episode 78, as we gain ever so closer to the triple digits. I'm so proud of us. I am. We're definitely quitting at episode 99. <laughs> episode 99, specifically. Oh, yeah. So 99, JT just comes out, look, man, look, guys, there's a list of words we cannot say in the podcast anymore. <laughs> so, you know. Yes, we need to make our language like, more okay, inclusive. Okay, I see. Uh. Yeah, we are not going to use anime anymore. We're going to use well-drowned motion capture th- thing. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. very inclusive. Look, guys, I'm sorry. We we need to stop podcasting because it's not inclusive for the mm. deaf people. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. Time to hang it up. Hi, I'm back. I've been uh, away from a month because I was renovating. Oh, my God. My I actually totally forgot. Also, I'm drinking. <laughs> I know. It's really hard to remember I'm not there. <laughs> and I'm drinking... Cereal juice, the danger type. I'm Ah, drinking whiskey. Cereal juice. That's a new. That's a new term I'm not familiar with. (laughs) The dangerous type. The dangerous type. Well, maybe I'll hear it in the uh, the cowboy video game I've been playing lately. Maybe they'll refer to the devil's juice as something like that. (laughs) Cereal juice? You don't. I've never heard it in my life. Well, my father calls it kerosene. Kerosene, I've heard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I call I call every single uh, bit like alcoholic beverage a cereal juice. Then you have the 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 safe side, the safe one, which is without the alcohol. Which I don't know why would you drink that. That's just di- diabetes in a can, or the dangerous type, or the fun type. The only thing I think I would refer to as cereal juice. I mean, did you drink? Did you this eat like beer? a lot of tricks? When you were a kid, and then you'd drink the drink the the rest of the bowl when all the cereal was gone. Is that how you come up with this term? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. No, it's because everything is made. It's usually referred here as uh, for uh, chip Cheap beer. Beer, okay. Yeah, because like it's just they use corn and a lot of weird shit to do chip mm. beer, and because of that, we just call it cereal juice. There's nothing more to that. It's just sugar and weird cereals they put together to uh, make these. Tori, I think we so, learned some Brazilian culture I, today. Nah. Yeah, but I use it for everything because technically every alcoholic beverage is a dangerous <laughs> cereal juice. Do you have any terminology, Tori, that kind of is like that? Have you heard of this before? Nope. Never in your life. Nope. Well, you're a good you're a good kid. Nope. Obviously, yes, you're a good good child. All right. Nope. So the 
summer anime season just started. It did? Yeah. yeah. Imagine if we actually talked about seasonal shows the anymore. Year is flying. Yeah, we kind of do. We're more or less reviewing reviewing <laughs> them in kind of like a backlog instead of seasonally. I mean, you are, uh, yes. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, just kind of going through. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just have four that uh, I'm going to watch, or at least try to this next season. Um, Fire Force Season 2, I'll continue watching that show. Uh, God of High School. That's getting an anime. That's uh, the yes, manga. Yes, Yeah. Yes, I know. I'm aware. Starting. And then uh, the two new ones. One was Decadence that's going to start, and I don't even know how to pronounce this one. Gibiate. <laughs> G-I-B-I-A-T. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I know. Gibiat. Gibiate. 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 I mean, that's how I first Gibiate. pronounce it, so. Oh, yeah. What you need to watch is the... Um... Let's see, where is it? The Monster Girl Doctor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the new Science Saru oh. OVA. Nihon Shinbotsu 2020. Or Japan Sinks. It's like, uh, yeah, it's oh, like, yeah. Um, you know, Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. Tokyo Magnitude. But yeah. uh, Science Saru. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, I'm just. I don't think I'm watching. God of High School. At least I'm not planning to. Although I've read the, uh, I've read most of the, most of the manga, but I think it's way mm. too cheesy. So reading it is okay because it's extremely cheesy. But in animation form, mm. it's okay. It's tournament art. The anime. It'll be fine. There you go. See, At worst, it'll be a tournament art. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, I don't know. I'm not, I guess I'm not in the mood for the cheesy stuff that happens in that manga. The rest is just second seasons where they just enslaved people at home to yep. produce. So, like, they are coming out. No Gun, Long, no, no see, gun, no Life anything. 2 is coming out. ReZero 2 is coming no out. No Gun, No Life. Yeah, it's really good. No Gun, No Guns, No Life. I recommend watching the first season. Uzaki Chun, well, Asobita is coming out, but I'm not watching it. Just don't really, don't really care. Yeah, it's it's a very sequel heavy season. Dive, diverse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the to the new shows, it's quite diverse. There's apparently some people want us to talk about what is coming out in the season, but this one, you need to look for yourself. Like the shows that are coming out, there's some magical girl idol thing. There's Echi just unknown, not as famous mm-hmm. Echi coming out, uh, Monster Girls and stuff. So it's something that you honestly need to look for yourself or watch every single first episode if you want to and see what you like. It's it's really hard to know what's going to be good. Or, or you not, can just say most fuck of it, it are either and not watch anything. Or just watch the second season. Too. Also, there's a new Uma Musume little enemy coming out and that pisses me off so much <laughs> uh, they will never make that game Hickey. they will never make that I know I, I come to terms to it but I still get very angry about it uh. alright you guys I oh my god oh, I gotta take care of this cat oh, he's doing his thing as he always does when I get the mic going uh, you, you guys to take care of your cat beforehand <laughs> Well, I try. I try to try to give him like catnip or something or food or whatever. He's just he knows whenever the the mic gets put up and the laptop goes into a specific position, that's when he goes, "All right. It's game on, buddy." <laughs> Time to ruin his main career. <laughs> so, um you guys have turned our little Discord thing into a VTuber chat. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Mentioned Pretty mentioned much. VTubers in the past. I want to know you guys' VTuber update. They are weird people making lives on YouTube. Yeah. That's essentially that's all. If you want to watch a um a dog girl sit around making cute noises as she is uh, absolutely destroying well and getting destroyed by demons and doom then you know there's like three streams well two streams actually uh 
that recently happened. She did that over the last couple of days. Streams from Doom 2016. It's a lot of fun. She sucks at it, but you know what? Who cares? 26, somebody play. She's cute. It's, <laughs> it's like, man, I don't, I don't understand what she's saying. That's, ba- that's basically the YouTubers in general. Corona in general is probably the embodiment of that. It's just kind of funny as well because her personality is a little bit weird. She is very cute. The way she talks, the way she acts, her accent is really cute. But she's also kind of fucked up. You see, she has a thing for um, gore and uh, splatter movies. And, you know, <laughs> so that's why she decided to play Doom. And, you know, that's yeah. right up her alley. <laughs> now, are any of these in English or yeah, are they all in Japanese? Her... They are all in Japanese. There are some English they ones. Are, they are English. There are English ones. Uh, let's see. There, there was a big push to internationalization of the Japanese companies. But you, you, you have some native English speaking VTubers that were coming out, and they're quite, they're quite good. Like uh, me and Tori usually, although in the chat, what JD sees is just talking about <laughs> weird people being weird on, on, on the try and try to sell him on Dogo Corona because she plays retro gaming. She does retro gaming a lot. Uh, we, when we are on voice chat, usually we talk about business. Uh, for some reason, me and Tori are heavily business-oriented people. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but usually that's uh, what yes, we talk about. Yes, the young 20-year-olds of this generation. Business-savvy VTubers. <laughs> exactly. It's not only VTubers. Every time, like, oh, look, they started to sell this new... Candy. It's like, well, yeah, what about the advertisement and profits about that? How is it, it, it produced? Like, Who it, produces it, it, it? What's the trade routes for this one? <laughs> yeah, usually usually What's that's what we talk about. It doesn't need to be line. <laughs> That's and very important. So, like nowadays we like now we're having like the third iteration of the market. It's booming outside of Japan. It's going well. So we just uh, totally just jumped right into it again uh, i never left <laughs> i've been seeing everything that was happening and it's it's very very interesting uh aside the business talk uh, a lot of people when they refer about the the new iteration of the market live tube d being the the prohibited multiple talented people usually they failed to become part of the japanese industry of entertainment uh, so it's very interesting they are field idols mm-hmm. singers voice actresses voice actors and they use vtuber as a part-time job or a step letter to become what they wanted to be or as a way of becoming what they wanted to be so like it's a very interesting community to be part of especially because there's a lot of japanese values being thrown uh, in the western side of things so you don't have a lot of spam you don't have a lot of drama when you have it's quickly muffled because that's the japanese way of doing things uh with scandals and stuff uh usually they don't ask for money they don't do that full-time usually they have full-time jobs and stream on the side if you start to if they see someone donating a lot of money they will call the person out and say stop donating money i don't need your money you should use it for yourself so when you get from what happens on twitch for example to those kind of things it is more it's healthier they are very bad e-girls. and they are extremely <laughs> the yeah they are really bad at the e-girl thing uh but yeah nowadays there's english especially in Indonesia for some reason. Well, the Indonesian oh, talents, they are in uh, they are multilingual, so they speak multiple languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it's impressive how many Indonesians watch Japanese yeah. content. <laughs> so now there's like now there's the we're going to the fourth iteration of the market, uh small companies appearing. Uh because it's easier to to grow when you have such a, a company behind you. Everything is way more tra- transparent uh, from the time when where Kiz and I appeared in 2015, 2016. Nowadays, the the more transparent you are, the better, like the biggest the company will might become. So now there's English or American-based companies, like small companies 
appearing to support VTuber activities, the Western market be became less, uh, how can I put it, hostile uh, against English-based or, or USA internationally-based VTubers. So it's interesting, it's interesting. It's becoming like the final shape that will probably be the normal for the next years. You know, one of the players now have the attention of Kadokawa, have the attention of many brands, other one has Sony money being directed, injected into it. So it's something that we'll we'll see in the next uh in the next few years. It's nothing that will fade away again like happened a few times. At least that's my perspective. Yeah. And some are literally just going from sponsor to sponsor. Like, it's really, it's kind of interesting. Because even if you didn't, weren't uh, involved in, like, the whole VTuber situation, if you're subscribed to, like, for example, Kadukawa's uh, YouTube channel, if you watch their videos sometimes just to see whatever whatever they're coming out with, whatever new, right. you know, general just advertisement and stuff like that, you might all of a sudden have realized that there was a fox girl and a lolly girl all of a sudden reading or reviewing chapters of light novel to you. <laughs> it's like, who the hell are these? Well... That, yeah, those are two whole alive YouTubers. That didn't, didn't happen before. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen before. Even when you have like the big, the biggest first boom of of the market. Of course, uh, although you had figures and why not, that didn't <clears> happen. <throat> the level of sponsorship, of course, Hollow Life is a little bit different. It's one of the agencies. It's highly profitable. People realized Hollow Life is highly profitable. Uh, the way they do stuff. So bigger brands of the bigger Japanese brands are coming to uh, sponsor them. Ichikara, on the other hand, which is the Niji Sanji guys, which is the biggest company right now. They have Sony making direct uh, investment in them. They have the Mitsubishi private mm -hmm. bank behind them. So one thing also those, those companies are different is Ichikara is an entertainment company. They have multiple like entertainment branches because what the CEO thing is TV will die and the internet will become the normal entertainment right. thing. It's already becoming that. So he wants to get the future of entertainment right now and settle this base. Cover Corp, which is responsible for uh, Hololive, is a technology software and hardware developer. So they developed... Uh, technological applications for AR, VR, and 3D CGI modeling and stuff. So they are not VTuber groups. They are just showcasing the technology that is coming. So that means not only the VTubers who are failed voice actors, uh, failed idols, failed whatever they are, they, are not, they didn't want to become VTubers to begin with, they have another goal, but also the company has another goal. Uh, which is better the technology or better the entertainment to the future. And, you know, it's fun. They are highly related, uh, even though, like, there's this other dark side of things, which usually it's what me and Tori talk about. They are fun people. They're weird, they're quirky, they're quirky, they do weird shit and cook very bad meals. <laughs> yes, one does. One does cook very so bad. It's meals. entertainment, even though you don't understand what they're saying. It's still very entertainment because they don't have any reason to do what you want them to do, because it's a part time. They don't live out of that. They don't like. Although sometimes they role play, especially because you know they ha you have the character thing that lasts like one month, and then they're just doing weird yeah. shit and makes you realize why they <laughs> failed to be singers and idols because they are just weird <laughs> fucking people yeah it's uh it's kind of you know it's that way that internet corrupts people you know it's like they're trying you know, whenever they start if you go and look at their a lot of their youtubers like early streams and you see they try to act cute they try to be you know normal like oh look at me i'm like i'm like an idolish person and then it's like after a month space after chat has gotten to them it's like Okay, fuck this. Swearing, drinking, fucking <laughs> whatever. Who Gotta cares? Get those vices going. Vomit on, on stream. stream. <laughs> it's... Yeah. Especially because although now with the fourth iteration of the market, definitely the best practices are being adopted. So like small companies, um, 
Hololive had an idea, and which is basically Hololive style of doing things. What what Hololive should be a small company, very self centered, with multi talented people. They know how to dance, <laughs> even though they use live to do. Why they would know how to dance? Most of them, don't. most of them. most of them know how to dance. They know how to sing. They know how to entertain. They know many things. So that's the normal now. Uh, you have the small companies. Uh, with it's easy to manage, and why not? So that's the normal. Seeing themselves as idols is the normal now, because it's a good practice and it's profitable. So yeah, it's fun, but you know you don't have the pressure of the idol idol dome. So you know you can do the the weird stuff, and they realized after a few months of streaming that people like them. It's it's a little bit ironic, I guess. People watch 3D streamers because of the fucking fake personality they put on, while they watch 2D streamers, which should be role playing by the true personality of the person behind them. So it's not about the character; it's about the person. It's about it's about the it's about the voice behind the character. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Also, like it's a it's a neutral zone. There's not a lot of stress. Not a lot of Drama, drama, not a lot of problems. They happen, but it's a lot of behind the scenes yeah, stuff. Usually, very quickly. Yeah, be- the behind the scenes stuff is either never comes to life, like never comes forward, and when it comes, it just destroys the company, which happened before. And if you're, or it just get muffled. If you're a shady company, you try to and pretend like nothing so... is happening. <laughs> uh... Yeah, there's many shady companies yeah there, there is no it's um it's definitely more calm it's the japanese it's definitely more calm a lot of the issues mostly revolve around the same stuff that basically anybody that does anything on youtube or twitch or whatever has to deal with like you have to deal with trolls you have to deal with people that just want to be an asshole standard stuff like that but those are generally pretty they're pretty minor you don't see it in a lot of them and those that do show up they generally get banned because you know vtubers found a great thing that they could do now with the new youtube system in which they basically just they have a bunch of rules stapled in the bottom of the stream like underneath in the description and whatnot that basically just says that if you see anybody being like an asshole or saying mean shit or stuff stuff like that simply block them or report them so you know chat mostly sorts yeah, itself yeah, out have, at this point yeah. <laughs> yeah that is true most of chats mm. And most of Western viewers also adopted those rules. So, like, don't talk to itself. Don't, well, don't chat that, on stream. That don't rule is almost stream, never followed, the, the chatting amongst each other. <laughs> on, on, Toa, on Toa stream, it, it is followed. On Toa stream, but on most uh, others, of they course, are not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, again, because when, when people, like, a bunch of Westerns start coming, people are like, don't chat, don't do not. And a bunch of people start screaming gatekeeping, as they always of do. Of course. But in this case, the people who say follow the rules one, uh, it's something that comes for months. So you need a lot of months. But again, it's the the neutral zone things. You never see spamming. You you mostly don't see. Uh, of course, now there's a little problems coming on, and that's for everyone. Even the Western VTubers, they are adopting those rules. Like, talk about the stream. Talk about the streamer. Don't talk about other streamers. If I'm not talking about them, uh, don't chat with each other. Try to just be here and enjoy what's happening. And that becomes that neutral zone thing. It's a place where, especially now, where everything is about a virus <laughs> and people going crazy and politics and That's blah, an blah, blah. And if you look wrongly to a person, someone shoot you in the head because you looked at the wrong place. You won't find any of those here. Minus Even that last in, one. In Twitch, you'll find those kind of things in <laughs> the shooting on the yeah, I guess. Yeah, that one, <laughs> that might happen. But the the other ones, it's just you go there for one hour, two hours a day, and you forget everything. You just enjoy someone being a dork online. Very relatable, because most of them are highly... Awkward, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. So, you know, it's even you can go to a Indonesian, for example. In Indonesian, usually they have a, a bigger follower. They will speak English most of the time. And you can just relax. 
and it's a it's a very good thing. Like a lot of people forgot how to relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in this back, in this past couple of, re- of years, and now they have a chance to to do so again, a friendly environment to do so again, and the market will grow. The market will grow a lot, although it might break because of Ichikata. But that's business talk. We're here to talk about yeah. anime girls. Yeah. That's, again, ultimately, the way I basically view it over uh, every time, it's like it's kind of like you know, it's like watching a slice of life anime essentially. Except, you know, it's game-focused, and they're actually just playing the game, <laughs> and they're being all weird and shit, uh, weird and cute, and whatever uh-huh. their personality is, there's a VTuber for pretty much anything. Uh, so, like, you basically just find whatever you're interested in, and then you sit there, and it's like, I, yeah, I can definitely spend, like, an hour each day watching them, like, that's, that's totally okay, and then before you know it, all of a sudden, you have subscribed to more of them, and... Now it's like you have a schedule to work around, and you have other things you need to do, and it's like yeah. shit. How do I, how do I make all this work? Tori is great, though. <laughs> I just, I just, I just love seeing Tori fall and fall even more, especially on Twitter. Oh my god! I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to see like this, this, oh, what that YouTube is is tweeting about, and then like people will follow it, and Tori's just there, it's like Tori. <laughs> uh, I think I'm like, <laughs> like oh, when did uh, that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think I follow like five different uh, great. different VTubers on Twitter, but I mean I'd still the fucking that entire thing happened just because Hickey's Hickey's interest in VTubers ended up getting one to fucking follow me, an independent VTuber ended up following me on Twitter for some reason. <laughs> that is true because I like your videos, so she probably went and, probably. and watched it. Like, wait, hold so... on, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, hopefully she's not listening to this podcast eh? as well, but. We haven't said anything bad, I don't think. <laughs> Probably not. I like her. She's a fun one. But yeah, now the the next step is just trying to get JD to watch. Just tried to watch one. I don't like again. It's not something that everybody's gonna be into. It's weird. That's kind of that's why I like it. I like weird stuff. But it's like it's definitely you know, bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But it's like you know, for all the a weird times, things that they do, it's times. like. Most of the time, like, I got introduced through watching clips, and it's like, you know, they basically just highlight everything weird that happens, everything just out uh, out of the normal. If you watch a stream, you'll realize that most of it is fairly normal. It is like watching somebody stream a game. Yeah. They're just talking about the game. Maybe they're talking to friends, having fun, like, you know, whatever. But every once in a while, they say some weird stuff, it's, like everybody does. Yeah, it's like the, we do here. We're fucking weird. Like... <laughs> yeah. I know, like, I know people who just watch the clips because it's the fucked up things, like, they do, or that happens, but, again, then you go to the thing of the neutral zone, when you get to the stream, and it's just, like, it's just a place where you can chill, watch them sing, uh, watch them do... Don't watch them sing. Talk about their daily lives, watch them sing, depending (laughs) on the person. And depending on the person, watch them sing, Uh, talk about the daily life, it's interesting, it's another person... That is just you know talking and we've all complaining about life most of the time. They 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 have a very positive view on things. Eighty five percent of the time. I mean, even if they don't, they don't really talk about it. It's not you know. No, and whenever they talk about it, it just makes you want to cheer for them, which is great. So it it it. It, it weirdly helps you to remember you are a human being and you should root for other human beings. <laughs> this two, live 2D anime girl reminded me that I am a human being and so are these. <laughs> I'm a human being, yeah. It's, it's a weird thing. It's, it's definitely some weird shit that happens. Uh, give it a try. It's fun. Just don't, just don't go full, go full rabbit hole. <laughs> don't holes. go down the rabbit hole too much. All right. Yeah. Although you can, I don't think it's possible, but <laughs> to not do. It, but anyway, it's fine. Okay, that was good. I hope uh, I hope the listeners really enjoyed uh, kind of the VTuber update. What's going on? I personally uh, enjoyed the financials part of it. <laughs> you guys were talking the most. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. We can. <laughs> I was talk about to say, there's a lot more to that. Talk more <laughs> after after the yeah. We can talk more about that after we we end up recording <laughs> if you so. want to. Uh, Let me play the music here, or the drop at least, and we can get on to our first review of four that's going to be on this podcast. Your first review. Yes, well, as my cat is still causing trouble, 
30 straight minutes of that. It's an invitation to my birthday tomorrow. I, I hope you'll be able to make it to the party. I'll kill you. Okay. I haven't played that one in ages. Ages, ages. So glad you guys I love can... that one. I'm so glad you guys can hear it. <laughs> mm. uh, oh, yes. It's yeah. my favorite drop, drop, to be honest. It's one of my favorite, yeah. <laughs> While you talk, JD, yeah. I'm going to get more uh, dangerous juice. Maybe maybe eventually we'll get the get the audio upgraded so you guys can hear it, but nah, <laughs> that, that makes it less fun. Okay. That costs money. That costs money, and we're doing fine. Vinland Saga. I've heard of that show. Yes, it uh, it came out the summer of 2019. Um, I didn't. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? It's been a while. I'm just kind of filling in the little gaps of shows that I never finished. Not sure why exactly. I just I don't know. Maybe I got burned out of the seasonal anime a little bit. Possibly. JD watching anime. Well, <laughs> never happens. All right. So Vinland Saga is a Viking anime. It's made by uh, Wit Studio. Perhaps you've heard of them, boys. Nah, they only make unknown shows like Attack on Titan. Yeah, no one's ever heard of that. Yeah. So it's uh, it spans 24 episodes. It's available on Amazon Prime, Prime Video, which I watched it through. Around the end of the Millennium Viking, the mightiest but atrocious tribe has been outbreaking everywhere. Torfinn, the son of the greatest warrior, lived his childhood in the b- battlefield. He was seeking the land of reverie called Vinland. Uh, not really sure that's true. This is the story of a true warrior in the Age of Turmoil. All right, that's a, that's a terrible summary. Uh, I was about to say, I don't think that's the show. That is not the show. <laughs> the uh, All 24 episodes focus around uh, this this uh, this boy, Torfin. His father's um, set up to be murdered by the uh, this one particular Danish general, which, by the way, we never get a payoff to. But uh, Torfin... Wants to kill the man who killed his father, the man who was paid for it, uh, Askeladd. Uh, we we learn a lot about who Askeladd is, his motivations, his little backstory. It's really cool. Uh, Torfin grows, uh, so he, he essentially leaves his family and lifestyle behind uh, to be part of Askeladd's uh, mercenary group, and to because his father was a very honorable man. Uh, he will only kill Askeladd through a duel. And uh, throughout the series, he always loses. And he, the older he gets, uh, and the more time that passes, he gets more and more obsessed, angry, and just his vision is downright uh, clouded in only that. Uh, character-wise, it becomes a problem at the end, a little bit for me, because all he does is scream and he's angry. <laughs> it's kind of over a little over the top. Um, oh my god, cat. Get! You're done! You're done, cat! No! Come here! Half an hour! 30 minutes! You're going in the room. Can't believe this. Yo, that's very sad. Uh, why would JD sp- scream at his cat? I forgot uh. to mention. Uh, the whiskey I'm drinking is my favorite brand. It's called Jim Bean. It's <sighs> Kentucky bourbon. It's really nice and has... Vanilla We're also food. branching out into alcohol reviews. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you've joined the modern game cast. Gene <laughs> hey, Gene Bean is very good. Jim I recommend you to no, get I'm that. I'm not Jim a Jim Beam guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Okay. It's great. Hold. Uh, All right. So. Okay. Okay. Vinland Saga. Vinland yes. Saga. Canada. Canada Saga. Canada Saga. <laughs> Canada, saga. <laughs> Canada Saga. Yeah. So. Um, the crux of the plot, though, is focused around this uh, Danish prince called Canute. He is. This is where. This is where you start meeting the other characters. Askeladd's motivation. Uh, you meet Torkel the Tall, who's just this crazy, giant, massive dude who just wants to. He all he does, all he wants to do is fight, and he finds his purpose in life fighting. And yep, he is best guy. He is that guy. <laughs> he is best guy. He is best guy. <laughs> uh, no doubt. Um, Torres just seen that because he's yeah. the region, I believe. So the prince 
gets uh, gets caught by Torkel at the uh, the, ta- the Battle of Tower of London uh, because the Danes are attacking England. And Ascalide being the mercenary group, he's just kind of, you know, hey, we'll do this for you for this amount of money, etc., etc. Uh, get a little introduction to the mercenary group, what they're about, and Ascalide, and you, uh, you see the uh, little time skip of Torfin. So Ascalide gets this big idea that he's going to save the prince... Uh, Prince of Danes from uh, Torkel's control, who's going to, uh, I guess, if I remember correctly, he was originally going to ransom him to the Danes because the English had uh, surrendered. Is that correct? Sure. It's been. Okay. I was about to say. <laughs> yes, you're you're about a year too late for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember what he wanted to do. I don't think you. Anyways, Askeladd uh, uh, concocts a plan to sa- save the prince. He does, and then they're running away from uh, Torkel. And there's a lot of crazy things the Vikings do. The The series, I think, does a good enough job of of really making it clear that the, the Vikings' culture and it is about, well, rape and pillage. I mean, that's, that's what they do, right? So... Uh, eventually, the prince's right-hand man, his father figure, uh, gets set up to be killed, and that's where the prince then kind of denounces God. He will make uh, Earth his heaven, kind of th- kind of thing. There's uh, you finally get a lot of religious outtones into the story, and that's where you get the the prince's motivation to kill his father, the crazy king, who wants to essentially kill him because he has two sons and he doesn't want the kingdom split. And you get Torkel and Askeladd joining under him as his retainers. And uh, Torfin's still doing his thing. He wants to kill Askeladd. And uh, it's all set up for that epic climax conclusion of... And you always have you always have this thing in the back of your mind. What happens to Torfin if Askeladd dies? Like, what's his life going to be like? And I feel that the series really, really got that over strong of what... Is that exactly how is Torfin going to live? Because his whole purpose is his entire life now has been just trying to kill this one man. And he's known nothing else. Askeladd even just asks him right in his dying words, you know, hey, what are you going to do now? And he's like, ah, fuck. (laughs) He's he's broken. So there's a really cool, and this this is one thing I've I've liked uh, about this anime in particular, is there's a lot of just subtle... Uh, imagery and what and and um, and scenes where it's it really foreshadows these things and the uh, the very last scene was Torfin dropping his father's dagger and kind of a a flat a flashing of the series goes off in the dagger and then it it gives you that big foreshadow of hey now we're going to seek out Vinland this epic land that they've spoken of from their dreams and and just stories from uh, Leif Erikson which is quite funny. Um, Tori, what did you think of the the series? I like the series. I like it a lot. Um, it changes some stuff that I didn't like from the manga. Well, from what I read of the manga, mm-hmm. uh, I like where this starts more than I like what the manga started with. Um, as it keeps going, it definitely shows a lot of strength. Uh, okay, my screen just went black. There we go. Uh, oh, that so was yeah, scary. It's, uh, <laughs> I hope your audio is yeah. okay. <laughs> No, my audio is fine. So yeah, now the the show it's it's a very it is definitely a strong show. Um, I was a little bit tired of it when I watched it. Like I was happy when it ended. Uh, I wasn't exactly like if they would have announced the second season immediately after. I don't think I would have went on that right away. Mm. Uh, like, but it is it is definitely strong. I like uh, I like that they do that thing where it's like uh, when it comes to revenge stories, right? A lot of the times. That that will always be the thing, right? It's like, I want revenge, I want revenge, I want revenge, I want revenge. And that'll keep repeating until he gets revenge or right. decides that it's not worth getting revenge anymore. Which I thought they were going to do because they started to kind of question Thorfinn on that towards the end. Where it's like, is it really worth it to get uh, get revenge? Like, should you really do that? Yada, yada. Well, and it's, it's like, are they actually going that way? And then all of a sudden it's just like, actually though, he's not going to be able to get revenge. <laughs> Well, that 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 was interesting because um, 
near the end of the series, uh, Askeladd's right hand man, uh, I forget his name. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, the guy who yeah. chose God. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 he yeah, eats, yeah. he's the, the one, one that eats the mushrooms and goes friend. into berserker mode kind of deal. Yep, Bjorn. <laughs> yeah, that guy. He, he, he Bear. like Bjorn. Bjorn, yes, yes, Bjorn. thank you, Tori. Yep. Leave it to the Norwegian to know the Viking names. <laughs> um, he says, like, Askeladd uh, says, hey, this guy who stabbed you in battle, um, you know, he went away, and Bjorn, he, Bjorn says, I won't harbor any, any hard feelings towards people that do things on the battlefield, right? Unlike oh. a certain someone. It's like, aha! Good writing. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't need to say things outright. Uh, coming from someone who just played and completed The Last of Us 2, a uh, game 100% behind a revenge story, a ver- and at its crux, very vanilla re- revenge story, so is Vinland Saga. It's all about Torfin. But the outer lining plot is what drives the story, and that's something that The Last of Us 2 was 1,000% missing. <laughs> I, I would disagree with you. Uh, I don't think it's about Torfin. I think it's about no. Askeladd. It's definitely about Askeladd. Torfin's the main so, uh, character, but it's following the, it's, this. It's story. like no, 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 no. The what I what I see is the the anime cover the prologue uh, of the manga. Well, I mean, it does say it does say that Torfin, yeah. Torfin only becomes the actual main character after the ending of the of the anime, where the anime left out, and you see like. In my opinion, was a huge drop in quality. I won't spoil anything, but I understand what they did. It's still ve- it's still a very good writing. Uh, after the the point the anime left out, uh, the anime ending. The thing is, it's it becomes that kind of book which is extremely boring to read, but it's you you need to recognize it's well written, <laughs> like the catcher in the uh, rye. <laughs> one of those but, situations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes just like that, at least for me. Uh, but it's still well written, and then Thorfinn is alone, and he's the main character from that that point on. Before, I think it's more like Asclad is the main character. Everything resolves about him. Everything resolves about his ideals and dreams, and Thorfinn is just there, more in the antagonist go. Because technically he's trying to destroy what Askeladd is trying to do. But the the the, the writing is so good. Yeah. The writing is way, way, way too good. Uh in if you it, since you 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 mentioned The Last of Us, even though I don't want to talk about that <laughs> game. Abby is the main character of The Last yes. of Us 2. So after like I think twenty hours playing, trying to get revenge, no, no, then it's play less with than her. That. It's only like something like that. It's only like ten. Okay. <laughs> okay, but imagine that the ten hours you played before is not actually the main character playing, but someone who's just there to be in the way of the main character, which is right. Abby, right? And then you play with her later. That's basically what happens in the in the Vinland saga. At least that's my. It's a way to 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 put my thoughts in in the Last of Us. No, I understand. If you, if you <laughs> want to hear some some the, uh, non spoiler yeah. Last of Us two talk, the most recent retro gaming podcast. Uh, we talked a lot about that. We talked a lot about how sales uh, impact it can impact the game, um, uh, public opinion. Uh, etc etc and then for the modern game cast uh, coming up uh, next week we'll do uh, a full on deep dive into just our thoughts over the story the gra- uh, graphical leaps and bounds that the game does etc my my point being is like like you said hickey it it is a revenge story with Ascalad as as our main focus we know that Torfin is our main character of the saga right that that is that is the crux. Much like much like Ellie is our main character of The Last of Us Two, but the first game is is you you play as Joel this whole time, right? Uh, and the second game now you're playing as Abby. Not the whole time, but you know at least half the game. 
Yeah, you know what? The the Last of Us one is. I think it's a better example. Which you well, that's because it's a much better written written story and game. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that is that is also true. But you know, you know who the main character is, but it's not the main focus of the story. Yes, and it's basically the Vinland Saga is just a prologue to what happens, and they become like way too focused in culture and religion dreams thoughts it it becomes a whole new well i didn't i did story. notice it i did notice impressive. i wasn't able to really binge watch this show because it's a lot of information the pace it goes by the uh, a lot of those inner thoughts a lot of philosophical talking amongst others kind of deal uh, you know i'd watch like two episodes yeah. every couple of days kind yeah. of deal it, it's it's a well written it's a well written thing you you lose a few things if you just watch the anime i highly recommend go out and buy the the manga because even even the side characters that only appear like for two three panels they have a well thought opinion on the world around them so it's a very good reading. I'm with Tori. By the end of the Vinland Saga, I wasn't like that that entertained anymore. Probably mm. because I've read the manga, I knew what was coming. But it's it's those kind of things that it doesn't have the same impact as watching the first time or seeing the first time. I can do a good example we have here in the podcast is with Touch. We are planning to finish at like episode 17 or something. And then I watch it one episode more. It's like, holy shit, we need to go to episode <laughs> 18. Like, it, it's something happens. We need to watch episode 18. like Or like episode 20 or something. I know it's four episodes, but we need to watch those episodes. It's important. Same thing goes to Vinland Saga. If you know what happens, maybe by the end of the anime, you might not be as entertained as you should be. But it's a, it's a still a very, very good anime. On itself. It stands on itself. The voice acting is great. The music, the opening and the ending were just amazing. The gra- the, like the, the, the opening visuals, the ending visuals, it's just the best you can get nowadays. When it comes to produce uh, production value and things. It's a very good anime. Mm. Like I still think you should read the manga for mm-hmm. literature values, not entertainment values, because it is very good. Except the point where they, I think when we, I was talking to Tori, they kind of changed the mm. history yeah, we elements of things bit, yeah. because there's no Norwegians in the story. Yeah, we're, we don't matter. I mean, I get it. As <laughs> no. The footnote. You, you matter in the second half. Your 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 city appears. Oh uh, yeah, it did. No, but like okay. the uh, the reason why that like and here is a little bit of, uh, like because the history of uh, I under the thing that I kind of struggle a little bit with Vinland Saga is because I understand what he's doing right. The history and what was going on at the time makes sense. That's why there is a lot of these talks. That's why religion is so heavily featured because you know there was a lot of battle going on there as well sure. uh, within Viking culture. Christianity or, you know, Norse mythology. Although they couldn't mythology. call it mythology, but you it know is, it is Norse. Who's better? Odin or your dude yeah. on the dude on a piece of wood? <laughs> well, I mean, I know which one I was for, but either way, like it's the God um, who the God who made wine. <laughs> well, you know, you know. That is we all thing. know how that we all know how that ended up in the end anyway. So uh like the um the kind of the thing that becomes a little bit annoying is that I feel like they kind of limit themselves like as annoying as it is, right? Because a lot of times you feel like, oh, they should stick more true to history. But at, at certain things, I feel like he kind of does himself a little bit of a disservice by trying to maintain too, like, too close or being too true to what what should be going on. And kind of that ruins a little bit of the enjoyment factor that you can get from it. Mm. Uh, like, it becomes more fact than fiction. And, uh, <laughs> right, so it's like, that's, that's a little bit annoying for me at times. And then that kind of ruins a little bit when he finally reaches that point where he decides, okay, let's go a little bit more fiction than fact. And then it's like, well, now you're kind of, now you're doing the opposite and that becomes a little bit weird <laughs> because that's not how what you've been doing previously. So it's like, it's well written, yes, but it is definitely not, it's not a manga you pick up and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to read like volumes, fucking 
three, four, five no, volumes no. back to back Slow to back. Reading. Like just, there's no way. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure somebody's gonna come be like, I did it's that. Dense. But you know, you get my point. <laughs> it's dense. It it's yeah. still very dense. Uh, same way you cannot binge watch the anime, you should not binge read the the manga. <laughs> I mean, just picking because up a volume, you might lose a lot of yeah, nuances. Just pick up a volume of the manga and yeah. compare it to everything else on the shelf. It's pretty fucking big. I mean, I'm looking at mine right yeah, now. It's it uh, I just have three <laughs> volumes, and it's like equivalent to twelve volumes of Blade of the Immortal. <laughs> yep. Oh, please don't do this disservice with Blade of the Immortal. It's way too good to be compared as well. <laughs> Blade of the Immortal is one of the best manga there you can get. I like the art of both, Hiki. But that's not Vinland Saga. And the uh, the author is doing the Nami Oki Degure as well, which is a very good anime that was in the last season. But anyway, Vinland Saga, it's fun. Uh, see it as a prologue. Should definitely go watch it and read the manga. Definitely is one of those things that it is worth. It is worth the price. The manga, I think each volume here in Brazil is like 50 bucks. Oh, but it's worth it. It is worth it. It's the price you get for a literature book. A good literature book. And I believe it's 100% worth the price. Although I couldn't buy it because it was out of stock when I <laughs> went to look for it. But <laughs> it might be on stock now since all the things that happen. I might just or if you have any good deals, get my what collection. I do here, where it's like you get every eighth manga free, just buy a bunch of cheap ones and then pick up a <laughs> volume of uh, Vinland yeah, Saga for can, free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. So I ended up giving Vinland Saga a very generous nine out of ten. Hmm? I thought about eight for a while and I go, you know what? I'll bump it up for that whole entertainment value and not really being able to pick apart, pick apart much of the cons to the story it was just so much pro for me so really enjoyed it 9 out of 10 one of the better anime of uh, last year yeah, that's for I still, sure yeah I still watch the openings and the endings because they are very good I think I gave it either an 8 or 9 yeah, I don't remember I either gave it an 8 or a 7 because like again my problem with it just comes from that lack of entertainment yeah. right? it's a good show but it is also that problem where it's like, when I'm not super entertained, mm. it's like, <sighs> it's a good show, but I just, it's not like, <laughs> I'd rather watch a lot of other shows than that. Right? It, it, and it definitely felt towards that towards the end as well, where it's just like, I am I had shows to watch and I would always just like save Ben the Saga for last. Not even because it's like, oh, that's, I'm going to love that one, but because like, I... Mm, I'm going to watch this one first. I'd rather watch this. I'm going to watch this. Like, do I watch this episode? Yeah, I'm going to watch that episode. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Well, screaming reviews for Vinland Saga. Go check it out. With that, let's get on to our amazing OVAs that we're going to review here. I want to live! Take me with you! Take me away from here! Okay. Tori, Hickey, here we are. There we are. Here we are. OVA time. So here the three OVAs we're going to review, uh, one is named Cypher. Mm -hmm. The next is Twinkle Nora Rock Me. And then we're going to round it out with one named Papillion Rose. They are uh, 26 minutes, 29 minutes, and 25 minutes apiece. And thank God they were only that long. <laughs> what do you mean? They should have been way longer. They were great. Absolutely. I, one one said forty minutes, and then it was it was actually like a big long interview afterwards. <laughs> that interview is key. That interview is important. You need oh, to watch that man. interview. Okay, so we'll begin with Cipher. I have two <laughs> two summaries up. Uh, Cipher was by Studio Magic Bus. Uh, I believe that's the Yamato studio. I think so. Uh, that is the Legend of the Galactic Heroes studio. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Something we just reviewed part three of. Well, uh, Artland did. Uh, yeah, Magic Bus helped. Yeah, yeah Magic okay. Bus was part of it. 
Uh, Okay, so this came out March 3rd, 1989. Its uh, genre is drama and music. Uh, Music is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct on the music part. Yeah. Uh, From Anime Planet. uh, Anis can't believe her luck when she finds herself in the same high school as famous former child star Siva. Although the cool and handsome Siva seems unapproachable, Anis manages to become his friend, but her happiness turns to surprise when she discovers Siva's secret for years. He's been switching identities with his twin brother, Cypher. Okay, that cu- that's what oh, happened. So that's right. what happened. I see. <laughs> oh, that makes so much sense now. I see. I see. Yeah, my surprise will be explained <laughs> in a few seconds. But now that I heard Don't worry, it, I was we're like, all in the uh-huh. same boat. That I hate yeah, that I thing see, they do. I see. That makes way yeah. more. I sense. hate that thing that they do oh. though, because. Uh, they they don't look like each so other except that, when they do. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So he was, so he was being gay with yes. his brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. The my that anime list sense. summary is: two brothers are in the spotlight. One one a movie star making a football movie. The other a musician who occasionally goes to school to cover for his sibling. What will destiny bring them? A much less informative summary. <laughs> what will destiny bring them? I don't know. <laughs> Who the fuck I don't knows? know what happened. All I remember is that ending scene, which is the best way to ever end an anime. You wake up, you look at your brother, you get out of bed, you look at him, you go, yeah. And he turns to you and goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so currently on my anime list, this anime has a score of 4.8. It sure does. It sure does. So I would be mistaken or lying if I told you I didn't know what the hell was happening this entire time. It is 20, 20 plus minutes of a music video with cuts in between songs of... Tori, you described it as an MT, like an old MTV interview where it's like yeah, muffled you know, audio. Muffled audio, like horrible, like just... Kind of, you feel like they don't want to be there. They don't really want to do this interview. Like, no, no enthusiasm in anything. I, swallow- I love it, yeah, and I, I can't the tell if it's the. Yeah, I can't tell if it's the bad acting or if that is legitimately. Or I, I wasn't sure. But then in the interview at the end, the guy is literally just like, "Yeah, we were trying to recreate those MTV interviews." Like, they did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't familiar, must it's have. kind of like this. Where uh, Tori, ask me a. Uh, Ask me, like, what I'm doing this weekend. So, JD, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, you know, I'm I'm just gonna hang out this weekend and watch uh, Cypher. Interesting. Are you gonna be watching Cypher with anybody else? Or will you be alone? Uh, it's, uh, you know, I was gonna watch it alone, but now that you say these things, uh, yeah... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. No, good thing to mention. Don't worry. Oh, I forgot. It's I forgot to hit God. the mic like that four times actually, while I did all that too. It's actually, it in, actually English. in English. Everything. They the those motherfuckers went to New York, found a bunch <laughs> of Japanese people in New York, and made them record an anime in English. <laughs> It's impressive. It's amazing. Like ten out of ten for the E4. <laughs> That's one hundred percent sure. One guy plays both the brothers. And so the it's music. A, it's a the funny music when is he talks very to good. Uh... I don't. Yeah, I don't know what what was happening in the anime. That does it doesn't make any sense. I was highly confused. But Footloose yeah. is amazing. <laughs> and that anime has Footloose would... in it. So that's everything. When that I show know starts this. and the music starts kicking in, I'm like, you know. I know everybody says this is bad, but I kind of feel like jamming right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! When when Fruit Loops came, it just I I was so confused. I was like, you know what? Fuck it! I just got up and started dancing to Fruit Loops. I don't really care about what the fuck. Is I happening. love the fact that in the interview the as well, he literally amazing. says that they they managed to get in, in contact with like record studios and what they're like. Yeah, they absolutely they let us, just let us use their music, and I'm like, what is wrong with people? <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> Crazy. But okay. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. Uh, yeah, I, I when I was watching this, I go, so are there twi- are they twins? Are they brothers? 
is it the is it the girl like that did she cut her hair and pretend to be one of them and cover for him? I don't know who this dude with the red hair is ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then and then I'm like, okay, is someone sick now? But I don't know who that is still. Uh, and then it just ends. Hmm. Oh, and there's a then there there's in the middle they're making a football movie and he's like, yeah, I didn't really play football, but you know here I am, I'm learning things. Cool. Yeah. We're allowed to just walk on here and have fun, and you know the director's teaching us stuff, and it's like, cool. Cool. I mean, I it sounds fun. <laughs> you know, I, I like to see some of that, but you know, yeah, sure, that sounds that's that sounds fun. Yeah, and when I say football, <laughs> I mean American football of all things. They, they are in New York, of course. It is American football. So. As a matter of fact, I love how in this the end, interview in the end, confusing. he literally describes exactly where this is taking place, like down to the street. And I just love how he's like, oh yeah, and as you obviously already know, how the fuck am I supposed to know where this right. takes place other than New York? You never say anything. <laughs> uh, I'm not familiar with New York. <laughs> I've never been there. Yeah, I've only been there once. Myself, no, twice actually. Hey, how about that? <laughs> yeah, been there twice, different sections of the city. Mm. So, also, by the way, this anime is literally based on a fucking like insurance commercial. That was where what? the uh, idea for this character, uh, the main character Cipher, uh, first appeared. You're kidding me? I, I, I lo- they say that in the interview. I love it. It's so great. Oh. <laughs> this is why you need to watch the interview at the end. There's so much good information. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. When, when I got to the well, how they, how they got the voice <laughs> actors, I was like, you know what? I saw a guy filming a wall, a traffic light, some Japanese people. I'm okay. I don't need you. I as don't soon need as I heard also, the MTV yeah. goal, I was like, all right, I've heard enough. <laughs> In case, um, also just to, so that you know, this was not just something that was slapped together. They took four years to create this thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> God. Yeah, that is true. One out oh of ten. My God. Uh, two out of ten. I'm giving it plus I one for honestly, that music. I I honestly don't know how to. Ten out of ten. <laughs> I, don't to... <laughs> I don't know how to score this because I don't understand what went on my fucking stream. <laughs> I, I I don't know what happened. I did, I cannot I cannot give a, a score to something I didn't understand. I mean, of course you can. <laughs> uh, two out of ten because the music is really good. <laughs> The rest, the story doesn't. I, I only understood the story now because JD <laughs> <laughs> read the fucking read, like the the synopsis to me. Probably enough as it is. <laughs> All right, the next OVA is uh, Twinkle Nora Rock Me. Rock Me. Yes. Oh man. It's from oh. uh, from 1985. Let's see, fall 1985, November 21st. Spans 29 minutes. Uh, studio is not listed, <laughs> so that's great. Does it matter? Uh, I mean, if you told me like one person made this, I'd believe you. <laughs> almost. You're almost right. Okay. It's not quite just one person. It's uh, it's a very small team, uh, considerably small. You see, Twinkle Nora Rock Me is a sequel to a <laughs> awesome. uh, to another OVA called Nora. Um. It's a prequel. No, Nora is technically the prequel. If I'm mistaken. I thought it was a no. prequel. No, it doesn't matter. They're basically two separate stories anyways. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which, doesn't no matter which way you true. flip that, it wouldn't make sense for the other one to come after anyways. Well, the director but, um, was the same man who did the art for uh, Hinotori 2772. Oh, no, 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 JD, JD, JD. The director is the same man. Who did the CG helicopter scene in Golgo 13? <laughs> it's so specific, yeah. That is that man. And, you know, Nora Nora was his first try. That man, and Nora is. That's, that's yeah. man. Oh my god, that's the man led it to is. the end. Nora. <laughs> Golgo 13 Cobra <laughs> helicopter. So, Nora, the prequel, essentially just. It takes place in a holiday inn, like a futuristic holiday inn, where Nora. Nora Scholar, which is her name. So, you know, apparently she's related to me somehow. Uh, <laughs> and, um,. She uh, kind of, she goes to Holiday Inn and kind of solves a situation with the computer there. 
who was taking over and ruining things. You know, sci-fi, sci-fi stuff. Sure, yeah. You've seen this Common before. Um, <laughs> exactly, right? So that's that's essentially it. But it's pretty normal, kind of just, ah, oh, we need to find this computer that's ruining the, uh, stuff and then shut it down somehow. And then after that, it's In Comes Twinkle Nora Rock Me, which, by the way, just so that you're aware, came out like six months after the first OVA. That's right. They literally made this thing in like yeah. six months. It's It shows. It definitely shows. Uh, and it's in like it's, 15 frames per second. That might be generous. You're, you're, yeah, I was about to say, you're generous. Uh, <laughs> in the beginning, there is no... Yeah, it's about two frames per in second. The, in, the fucking, in the beginning, there is no fucking, uh, like, in-between frames in the, in uh, between uh, in the animation. animation. And there are barely keyframes. Yeah, it looks, so, it looks you know, like, that it looks like something everything. equivalent to stop-motion video and, like, claymation <laughs> yeah. stuff. But it's even worse. <laughs> Way worse. Yeah. And it is just... It's horrid. Yeah. It's so bad, but the greatest thing about it is because, what's his name? Satomi uh, Mikuria, that's his name, the director. This thing, especially Twinkle Nora Rock Me, there's a midget in this called Max, who looks suspiciously like the director. Sure does. And I am entirely entirely convinced that that is his self-insert, so that he could spend time with his waifu Nora. Because for fuck's sakes, there is a goddamn interview which he did where he literally, he buys a motorcycle, a custom-made motorcycle that's similar to Nora's from the manga. And he fucking hires a cosplayer to dress up as Nora. And the entire thing is literally them just spending the day together, riding his motorcycle, talking, talking a little bit about production, just decking around and he's having a great time. And I'm like, this man is living the dream. (laughs) He got to fucking live. He got to fucking spend a spend like a month or a couple months with his waifu. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Because like whenever you you hear about <laughs> Twinkle Lord of Rock Me, uh, it's usually about the animation, and it gives the impression that the whole thing is doesn't have in betweens or keyframes, but it some some of the scenes yes. they have them. But the the true gem. <laughs> Behind this anime is actually what Tori just said. I didn't know that. I, I like I said, I knew Twinkle Nora because of the animation issues. I didn't know what the director <laughs> did, and that made everything so better. Like, oh my god, I love this man. Yeah, no, right. He's he's like the only other person I knew who did that was my friend who bought a fucking Haruhi cosplay and made a prostitute to use it. <laughs> So, like, I was like, holy shit, it's the second time I see someone living the dream. I wouldn't buy, like, I wouldn't pay a brush to, to use a cosplay, but, you know, both men, both guys did. I was like, I'm I'm jealous <laughs> and impressed. It's like I said to Aki as well. It's like, when you see this, you are going to be horrified. You are not going to like it. But God damn it, we all know that if we were in this man's position, we'd do the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's absolutely great. Um, yeah, the story in Twinkle Nora Rock Me doesn't really matter. She's a bounty hunter now. She has psychic powers. It doesn't make and, sense. And uh, none of this was pre- was fucking part of it before. So, yeah, and she's a bounty hunter. She has uh, psychic powers. She tries to arrest some dude who also has psychic powers. And then there's a dance montage. Oh, man, there's a dance montage. With a midget. With a midget, <laughs> yep. There are two, there's, there's two dancing montages. Yeah. The first one was, is with the midget. The second one is with the midget using a tuxedo and a cyborg. Yep. I think those those are the two like high points of. The and game. also, no, those are <laughs> not the well well, sense. Qu- well animated scenes. Those are about as bad as the opening. No, <laughs> no the den- the dance has three frames. <laughs> like it's it's two it's two ports. It's a two part dance, and each one of them has three frames yep. each. And if you want to really, there's a really feel bad, somebody on YouTube has made, has taken that dance, the first one, and they have fucking, they have badly interpolated it up to 60 frames per second. It is, I had to stop watching. I actually got motion sick. I, oh I almost God. threw up watching it. You got a link it's for this? It's so bad. Uh. It's on it's on the podcast related things, but nowadays it's just a VTuber discussion uh, channel. Yeah, I mean you could. I'm Discord pretty sure you thing. can find it by just typing in "fucking Twinkle Nora Rock Me" as well on YouTube. Okay. Uh, Twinkle Nora yeah. Rock just, Me. Just, just yeah, six. Twinkle Nora sixty. Yeah, Twinkle FPS. Nora Rock Me sixty FPS. 
Of a Glorious. terribly interpolated to 60 FPS. It's <laughs> it's something. It's not. Uh, I don't like interpolation and interpolated frames in general. But my God, <laughs> that was uh, something else. Yeah. It's it's a good it's a good storage storage of what happens when it's badly yep. interpolated. But you know, at the end of the day, I can't really say much because. This man, this director, he's living the dream. Or he was. I don't know what he's doing right now. He hasn't done anything since he they was, made 80. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> credited anyways. And uh, why. other than that, you know, he was on the cutting edge of uh, technology at the time. Because he is technically the one who, whether or not you're happy about that or not, he's technically the one who's responsible for uh, CG integration in anime. So, <laughs> you know. I mean, he has a legacy. That's more than most of us can say. <laughs> He has a legacy on this podcast, at least. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no this uh, this is my this is my new favorite director. He's my he's my favorite guy in general. If I could meet up with this guy and buy him a beer, I would. (laughs) True, dude. I would even buy him a fucking bottle of whatever. A bottle of champagne. He's like, dude. You you inspired my friend to buy a cosplay, and And he didn't even know it. (laughs) So like. And he didn't even know it. I, I will. I, I forgot to talk about this guy to this, to this uh. my friend. So I might as well just do it when I'm done with the podcast. But yeah, he has a legacy, and you know, I think it, it will be a fun life. You just direct one anime, do some CGI, and then disappear. Also, the the cosplay thing. But yep. He had fun. I think that's that's the that's the moral oh of God. Twinkle Nora. <laughs> Twinkle Nora rock me. It might be horrible for you to watch, but at least the guy who made it had a lot of fun doing so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean Nora had fun as well. She danced with a media. <laughs> that scene was just where I would so qualify that bizarre. on the fun scale. But all right, it's it's so it's so yeah, weird. About okay, the, so also about the so the she's 60, a bounty hunter on totally not the, about stout, the, 60 the Star FPS Wars plan. dance. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. With none of that going on, there's uh, she's after she's after this dude who's like taking over the planet because he has psychic psychic abilities. And in the middle of heading towards his base, Max the midget is like, "I wanted to be a dancer, but you know, stuff happens." And she's like, "No, come on, Max, dance!" And she gets two yeah, sticks. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, he he says just that. No, no, he's like, "I'm I don't know. I'm not going to help you because." You know, I might die, and I don't want to die. Guy has psychic powers. I'm a midget. I don't want to do that. And she's just like, dance, dance. for me. Like, excuse <laughs> me. Uh, I also love. By the way, like, I, I I do actually love this. Like when she starts playing, you know, in an anime, like or not even just anime, but a lot of things when they do shit like that, they actually get like proper music coming in. But when she starts banging on shit, it's just random banging. I'm like, you know what? That is at least accurate. Yeah, it's random banging, and then the like... in- the other instruments out of nowhere come in, and it cuts to yep. Max, and he's like two frames of kind of one arm goes one he way, does the, the ch- other arm goes he the does other. The and dance in slow motion. <laughs> it's like nothing. Yeah. The thing is, also, I haven't watched the 60 FPS badly interpolated dance because the the original dance with like the three frames gave me motion sickness <laughs> yeah. so if i watch if i watch the 60 fps one i'm going oh, yeah. to throw oh, up yeah. and the thing is i don't have motion <laughs> sickness i never had motion sickness like i had i go out to fish on boats in the high sea and i never like had motion sickness there but th- that fucking anime <laughs> gave me motion Nora sickness Rock <laughs> with this all right <sighs> Interpolated to sixty yeah, for Oh yeah, I'm doing it. Watch it now. Terribly interpolated, interpolated to fuck it. Oh my god. Here we go. Yeah. Max dance. Again, it, <laughs> then, like... <laughs> yeah, it is oh, it even man. says in in, then, in like, parentheses he... terribly interpolated. Yes, it's done on purpose. <laughs> it's not like it was trying to make it good, it was trying to make it worse. And he succeeded. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think you can make it better. <laughs> no, but you, <laughs> like, God damn it! You know what? There is actually you, you can I mean, there worse. is actually another one who actually reanimated that scene because you know it doesn't look good still, but it's like it at least makes more sense once you add in some in between frames because there is actually stuff there that's happening. It's just you know 
it's not animated. <laughs> you just cannot see it because it's not animated. It's so weird. Uh, it's weird to look at. Yes. All right. Because it so, keeps morphing. All right, so I'm just at the two frames where he's like moving his arms back and forth in a frame. Yeah. And you can see how the fucking it's interpolation still... is just struggling, so it's morphing his arms around. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. it's still it's still it's still struggling with that. It still looks like it's three frames. Oh, ew. <laughs> oh, this is weird. Yes. Ah <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, what is what is happening? Twinkle Nota Rock Me dance terribly interpolated <laughs> by a two F sixty FPS triggers the fight or flight. <laughs> Okay, they're both dancing now. To the to the human body. Ugh. You want to punch your screen or close it the It has 724,000 views. <laughs> Dude, people love this. It was just made last year, too. Huh, how about that? Yeah. Ugh. I see in my suggestions now, it says, Up next, yeah. Twinkle Nora Rock Me, but it zooms in on various bad faces made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a few, like, <laughs> meme videos of it. I like it. Ugh. Thank you very much, Kenny Lauderdale, for introducing me to this show. Oh God, it looks like they're floating on, on yeah, it looks like they're floating in the air. Okay, I'm, enough of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't finish it either. Uh, all right, so that's Twinkle Nora Rock Me. I had strangely a lot of fun watching it. it it's super terrible, but I liked it more than Cipher because I still could figure out what the hell's going on. So two out of ten. Yeah, I also gave it a 2 out of 10. It's still absolutely awful, but you know what? Excuse At the end me. of the day, it, it's not about whether or not you like the show. It's about how... It's about the fact that the director had fun. <laughs> that <laughs> That's is, all that matters. True. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hit. I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10. Just because the director is such a fucking <laughs> legend. <laughs> I don't know, like, we, we need a, a special episode just so we can watch Nora, think of Nora Rock Me, and just the, the CGI of Go 13 again. <laughs> right. Oh my god. Let me add it to my... The, the, unsung, the unsung hero of the, the anime. Forget <laughs> Miyazaki, it's this dude. This is the true champion. <laughs> Alright, now to uh. pull up Papillion Rose. Man, JD, you're so slow. Oh my god, I'm so. I'm, you know, this is this is one I go. You know what? I'm not making a, an agenda for this one. We're just doing this on the fly. <laughs> All right, might as well. Might as well. We're gonna we're gonna put as much effort into this as the as the people who made these animes did. <laughs> Cipher took four years. So I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah, that is, that is uh, Papillion Rose. Uh, by leaps and bounds, the most recent anime <laughs> OVA that we're doing. Yeah, it's like two fucking eighties OVA novels in two thousand three. Yeah, April twenty fifth, two thousand three, <laughs> spring two thousand three OVA. Uh, this does have a sequel to it all, a TV show. So this was the most successful out of the, out of the group. It is an etchy magic sci fi parody, uh, parody of Sailor Moon, by the way. Uh, you learn that as you watch. Sailor Moon and Cootie Honey. <laughs> the and better version. Magical Girls in general. The better version of uh, oh, Sailor Moon. This is the um, yes. TV show I pulled up on. Oh my god, all the scenes are coming back. Was, oh my uh, god, this show. I need, to get, I need to get so wasted. I don't remember anything. Then put Papillon and Rose to <laughs> Okay. To content watch. warning, nudity, and sexual content. Boy, so howdy is there. <laughs> oh, boy, howdy. <laughs> it's by Studio, oh. and I've never heard of this yeah. one. Kelma Dick. It's very appropriate yes. that it has Dick in the studio's name. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be a oh, reasoning behind that. They've been involved in Bleach. So, okay. They don't... They don't have really anything else. Sure. Other than Papillion <sighs> Rose. Okay. Uh, I keep wonder why. So, for young Tsubami-chan... Working as a lingerie-clad hostess and surviving high school is a way of life. Little does she know that she is about to become an unwitting pawn in a battle of orgasmic proportions. <laughs> Once she beds the charming Hikaru and seals her fate as a papillion soldier. Yes, she has sex with uh, a random dude on the street. Way better than fucking Usa he ever did with Amaru. <laughs> I mean, it's way better than I think. Like the Hikaru, he's like the... the uh, what is the mask. name of the guy? Coming. Hand like coming. Yeah. The tuxedo, the the the, the hentai mask, the hentai coming, the the tuxedo mask. But instead of like throwing the rose, 
Do you remember about the, the villain? He just ejaculates in his face. I love that. It's oh, like, God, wait, it's what's evil. this? Well, Stop, you evil fiend. Wait, did you just... Ew. No, 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 no. Because the, the initial reaction of the of that woman after she gets sprayed with cum on her face, she goes, oh, good shot. And then she realizes what it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, Using so her good. patented oh, Rose yeah. Orgasm Power Erection Special Move. <laughs> Let me say that again. Patented Rose, orga- Rose Orgasm Power Erection Special Move. Tsubami must fight. And it, also the, the intonation of it is just the Moon Prisma Power makeup yeah. from Silumu. <laughs> Tsubami must uh. fight the minions of Regina Apis. A, a ruthless, yeah. A, ro- a woman who seeks to possess all the sexual energy in the world. I'm so glad I went into this this totally blind now that I've read the summary for the first time. All three of these shows, I hadn't even looked up so good. Uh, anything about them. So made it made it so much better because uh, the. What Papillion Rose does was shocking to me. (laughs) Specifically, what happened with the cat. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I I warned you. I I told you the cat did more than just talking. When the cat's introduced, it talks, and I thought it was funny that uh, Zubami throws the cat outwards and says, Demon, or whatever, (laughs) because it's talking. The cat then proceeds to go up her skirt, sniff her vagina, and he's like, oh, I smell the power of whatever fucking phrase it is. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's weird. Something Sailor moon Something Sailor Moon, what, what dot. Little did I know that things were going to f- <laughs> fucking escalate more and more from uh, p- uh, Subami using a uh, dildo... Uh, to, uh, yeah, oh, or no, yeah, the vibrator, the, the, a vibrate. It was a yes, vibrator as as also it's a like vibrator, a cattle but, prod. But it starts as as like she 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 grows a dick and then she just pulls it. <laughs> uh, to oh, the God, that, uh, yeah, to the yeah, um, so good. To the uh, what, what the the soldier of Regina to you who uses a well Weep. so. It's a she whip. like, it's like an. <laughs> it's a whip that she uses to do a, a. a <laughs> yes, yes. There we go. Wireless blowjob power to suck the energy out of the out of dudes, um, mm-hmm. and then on their crotch. Yeah, yeah that's where you absolutely, get their energy. Absolutely, absolutely. That's where you get all men's uh, sexual energy is from their penis. Uh, that, that is, there is no doubt yeah. behind that. <laughs> that is, that is. Where else will you get it from? Medical fact. <laughs> Cut to uh, totally not tuxedo mask in like a hotel room with the cat, and the cat is giving this dude a blowjob, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, <laughs> got calm down there." And she's like, oh, "I thought, I thought your skill was going all night or multiple times." My good God! That's <laughs> uh, no problem. Oh man, it was a. Interesting it was ride. Absolutely wonderful. It was definitely the best of it. Was, oh, yeah. It was indeed the most entertaining like, out of the no, three, no, and just... uh, sadly, <laughs> the the best animated. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I guess. <laughs> Technically, I mean, you, look, you, I mean, it's not even a competition. <laughs> For no, we have Twinkle Nora. Oh, Twinkle Nora, Rock Me is terrible. Two Nora, friends. Nora is way better animated. And Cypher. Cypher. <laughs> <laughs> it oh wasn't also not that good <laughs> oh my god this show was such a mess it like things just so kept bad. escalating more and more the becoming time. a parody upon a parody of itself yeah i was like okay there's some sexual innuendos it's kind of funny and like, then it... it starts it starts with a girl in high school going to a fucking hostess club where everyone uses lingerie a lot <laughs> Oh I love God. it. I love it as well. Oh it's literally God, just I'm like crying. when I read the synopsis for this as well. It's like <laughs> talks about how she was blackmailed. Like I was like, oh, Tsubomi is blackmailing. It's like, oh, oh, she's being blackmailed. 
No, she's blackmailing her boss to allow her to work there. She's underage, after all. Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, that's exactly how that works. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, but it's yeah, okay. Definitely it's... the turning point is when she's she's either late for school or work. Uh, I think it. I think it was work because she was in detention at yeah, school. Work. That's what she says. Yeah. Uh, yep. And then she bumps into not to tuxedo mask, and she falls in his arms, and and he's like, "Hey, are, can you walk?" And she goes, "No." And they go, "Okay, let's find a place to. Where can I take you?" Looks to the Love Hotel, <laughs> right next door, and then they bang, and she's just like, "Best sex ever." <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I was like, oh, oh I see what I they're like, doing. Oh, they're okay, doing. all right. Cut to, cut to her moaning like crazy. Definitely it's like, the turning oh, point. Oh, I think I just scored. It's like, well, okay. Best lay. <laughs> yeah, she's like best lay in my life. And I was, I was actually thinking uh, that when it was going to turn to the sh- like showing her and making all those noises, it was going to be one of those parody moments where she's uh, like. I don't know, putting carpet down <laughs> or something. <laughs> Parody it was. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely putting. So, she was definitely using some <laughs> carpet. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it's so great. That was the turning point. Um. Yeah. Uh. What else is there? Uh. <laughs> there is uh, one very important thing. There is no. No, there is one very important thing. And that is the story behind the show oh. and how this thing came to be. Oh, do tell. <laughs> because, Enlighten us. you see, Papillon Rose existed for a long time uh, before it, its eventual release in 2003. However, Papillon Rose was a joke uh, on the internet that was being spread around. The guys behind it kept creating um, fake art, like uh, basically just uh, photoshopped and like re-edited uh, versions of Sailor Moon okay. to kind of keep teasing people about a new Sailor Moon like a more adult version of Sailor Moon oh. and then they kept teasing everybody with it but it never happened and it never happened and it, until people eventually just got super angry and then they were like fine, fine, it'll happen and then they didn't hear about it for years until suddenly here's, here's Papillon Rose OVA <laughs> Oh, speaking of the Sailor uh, Moon part there's a Moon pr- Prison Power uh, transformation, but all she does is like strip her clothes off, and the cat goes up on her tits, being like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, oh my god, I f- I forget what it was. Well, there was a cutie honey reference in there as well. Yeah, it was it was that one. She uh, does honey, whatever you know. She does the the cutie honey transformation, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it's all in the Sailor Moon sequence. Honey flash. Yeah, <laughs> honey flash. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great. I I love it. I I absolutely love this. It's a little bit of a shame because they also wanted to make more of it. Like there is a sequel. Oh, there's to it, there is a TV a series, but it's kind of a botched sequel, sadly. Well, it's six uh, episodes. I think also by Kelma Dick. Yeah, they wanted twenty six. Somehow they didn't get that. I I don't see how. I don't see why not. Oh, it looks so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, oh, the characters look half as good. <laughs> yeah, and they are. And they look. It's half you know as, more suitable the, for they, TV and, as well. And they look half the age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Well, it's a but there's a, a lot of them. Let's see here. Uh, what else was there? Uh, let's see. Peplum Rose star as a metafiction joke and what claimed to be the website for the new anime project. Lingerie fighter Pebble and Rose. The website probably posted fo- uh, pictures of characters which were usually copied from se- scenes in Sailor Moon, with the artwork changed and the lyrics to openings and ending theme songs. The man grew, people found out, yada yada. Subsequently, an episode guide for the non existent first series and manga. Yeah, yeah, right, there was a manga too. Well, there wasn't, but you know, <laughs> was made available. As well as a set of CD ROMs containing a two minute animated promotional clip, eight tracks, six background music, and two vocal songs, system voice clips, a computer for computers, uh, Papal and Rose Mahjong game, and two screensavers. And this is all for something that didn't even exist yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it was one of those jokes where it went yes. too far. <laughs> Oh, I love it. They got it. They got random people to boil, uh, boil in, like uh, send in their like uh, voice clips as well, if they wanted to voice like uh, villains in the show or whatnot. So they got like a bunch of voice of like uh, wannabe voice actresses mailing in clips to them as well. <laughs> uh, I like when these things happen. It's always a good time. So bizarre. 
So bizarre. So the guy, the, the guy's, the name, the guy's <laughs> name is is Dandy Lion. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, Dandy Lion. I was like, yeah. <laughs> It's like I get you, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. uh, God damn it! Is... They don't do anime like like <laughs> like before. Wow. So I definitely had the most. Although, like, there's an NTR. There's there's literally an NTR anime coming out next season, but. <laughs> so my sure enemy is. list gives this uh, an average of four point seven five out of ten. <laughs> I don't see why. Uh, yeah, I, can't... I don't. I don't get it. I think. Uh, I think I'm giving it the same score as Nora Rock Me. <laughs> Personally, how? What do you mean? How dare you? What you want me to give it a uh, three instead of a two? No, I want you to give it a four, like I did. Oh nonsense! Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving it a four as well, but that's all because it's, it's shitty. <laughs> but I, I really like shitty jokes. It's like. Uh, <laughs> It's it's my fault, and in this case, um, there's nothing way too. You know what? I will bump it up to a three in the production. You've convinced me. Yeah, there's instead nothing of horrible, horrible in now it's just very honestly. bad. <laughs> it's it's well animated. Oh, mm. the music it's okay is animated. fine. <laughs> okay, it's okay animated. The music is okay. Everything is okay, but the the the, the shitty jokes are yeah. Really catchy. I, like I was laughing, I was laughing through the whole thing, but that's because I just like mm. shitty. Like shows. I, I made a video about this on my YouTube as well, uh, Anime Top Scholar on YouTube. Yes, by the way, go check it out. And guys. like, mm-hmm. so <laughs> essentially, and that's literally the point. It's like, people, like I definitely think this is one of those OVAs that is worth watching, even though it has a low score, right? Because it's not a typically good show, but I mean, for fuck's sake, it is a great parody. It's hilarious you know if what? you like You're that absolute, sort of humor. You know what? You're absolutely if you right. don't, Espe- especially <laughs> you for don't our like... podcast where we've watched over a hundred episodes of Sailor Moon, and yeah. n- now we got this. I'm like, huh, I get it all. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but it's it's definitely one that's like you know, obviously, if you don't like sexual humor, this is going to be absolutely horrid for you. But like, if that's your kind of humor. My God, you're gonna like this OVA. Or are you implying? Are you implying some people out there don't like sexual innuendos? I do imply that there are prudes around. Yes. Oh come on! It's two, it's twenty. Ah, uh, it's twenty twenty. You're right. It, it is twenty. It is current year. You're right. You're right. So I'm on my, I'm on Anime Planet, and the first recommended show underneath uh, Papillion Rose is um, from 1994. It is called Butt Attack Punisher Girl Gautamon. We are watching I think it. we gotta add this. I, I think we gotta we do it. another OVA <laughs> cast. You watch it. One episode one hundred. But attack girl. But attack girl. Something Gautamon. something nine four. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, I don't think we will be able. It to is one episode find forty five minutes. We must do this. It is Let's another etchy up. magical girl <laughs> parody. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I'll try to find it somehow, <laughs> some way. I don't care if I have to pay some shady guy in, a, in an alley. But, uh, look, it. I've just skimmed over the summary, and it has the words Buddha, Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, we're watching this somehow, some way. And a devout Christian also yeah, comes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, that, that that's it. Next next week hi guys i made a new <laughs> video it's on my fucking youtube channel and it's just like butt attack curl and something something <laughs> it just started 15 minutes of course talking it is about dude, are you show. kidding me yes they're like these types of these types of shows these are great like we talk about a lot of stuff a lot of good retro anime some sure, bad yeah. anime right but sometimes we just need to branch out and find like the just the most horrific sounding shit that sounds like it could be just plenty entertaining. And listen, that's exactly what this podcast has been. Cypher, terrible. Loved it. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Back> uh, <laughs> Twinkle Nora Rock Me, awful show. I absolutely enjoyed watching it. I watched it, no problem watching it all the way through. Papillon Rose, oh my god, I had such a good time. It's. I watched, I watched Cypher and Twinkle No, I, I watched... Yeah, I watched Cypher, Nora, and Twinkle, Nora, Rock it, Me. I watched it all at the same back. time. Like, every single, like, all, yeah, I watched 
All Me too. Three I watched them back to back to back, and I'm like, these are slowly yeah. getting better and more entertaining. <laughs> I definitely went in the right <laughs> order. <laughs> it's like... It was like, Cypher, I don't understand the fuck's going on, but he, I'm gonna jam to the music, because 80s music is really nice. <laughs> Twinkle Nora, there's a dancing midget, that's all I need. <laughs> and then there's the story about the director, and it's like, this is way better, and Papillon Rose is just amazing. <laughs> it is a Ooh. masterpiece of its kind. Oh my god. Alright, so, I gave the, just one more time, I gave those 1, 2, and 3 <laughs> scores, respectively. What a climb. Yeah. <laughs> what a climb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it went from mediocre to bad. Or very bad in this case. Yeah, uh, yeah I gave mine uh, 2, 2, and a 4. Okay. So basically, the to, Same, put, to put these two, in perspective of other shows we've uh, reviewed that have gotten similar scores, we got Grappler Baki, uh, Witch Hunter Robin... <laughs> Uh, I, I, listen, I don't care, okay? These shows are way better than Grappler Baki and Witch Hunter Robin. <laughs> all of them. Uh, well, being that we didn't have to watch like 20 episodes of these. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Listen, that matters. That does matter. That counts for something. <laughs> Did you waste my time? I feel like I didn't waste my time at all watching these, so. I didn't waste as much time, I so definitely that's did not. <laughs> that is a fact. <laughs> uh, so our next episode, we are reviewing Appleseed. I assume that's the OVA from the 80s. I would so, because, you know, I watched the, like, what was it, 2004 or whatever? Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I've already seen that. Doing the There's 80s no OVA, I have um, a history with that anime from my time in Germany. It was my first uh, anime I watched in German. So, I'll be watching for the first time not in that language. <laughs> and it's been over 10 years since then, so. No. It's been... 15. Yeah, it's been it's 15 years. years. <laughs> JD, you're getting old. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge difference time, between time 10 and 15, JD. Time has JD. definitely flown by since then. So, crazy. <laughs> At least that time. Uh, and then we got uh, Touch, Part 2, and we're finishing Legend of the Galactic Heroes after that. That's our plan through Episode 81, so we can definitely plan ahead uh, going forward. So this was, this was a lot of fun. Good, simple cast. Uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, anime that came out in the last... Six months to a year that I'll review <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> Maybe it'll be like season four of My Hero Academia or some shit. Yeah, that definitely needs a review. <laughs> definitely needs a review. Or I'll finish Dr. Stone that season. <laughs> Something like that. Guys, this was episode 78. Lots of fun. See you next time. Peace. See you. Yeah.